A question we get asked a lot is why patients only make a certain number of eggs. So I thought I'd address this today in a quick video so that you guys can all have some answers to that question. So the number of eggs that a woman produces depends on multiple different factors. First and foremost, probably age is going to be the most important determinant of the number of eggs you can produce. When you're young, let's say 18, 20, 21, you're capable of producing multiple follicles all at the same time if we're giving you stimulation. When you're older and you're getting into your, say, mid-30s, that number begins to decline. By the time you're getting into your 40s, it's actually getting quite low and routinely you'll see a point where you're only capable of making one or two eggs and often that's when you're around the age of 43, 44 and certainly over that it does become quite difficult. Now of course there are lots of exceptions. We've got young women who can't produce very many eggs and we've got older women who can produce lots of eggs. So I remember one patient of mine who had a very high ovarian reserve and when she was 45 years old she actually made 26 eggs for us so it's not a one-size-fits-all you guys have heard me say many times we're making babies not cookies here so cookie cutter medicine doesn't work in fertility but overall you got to understand that age is a huge determinant of how many eggs you will have and on average the younger you are the more you'll have and when you get older, certainly 35 kind of being one threshold and 40 being another, you're really gonna see a decline in the number of eggs. Secondary factor is your ovarian reserve. So that's how strong your ovary is. And we can measure that in a variety of techniques, none of which are perfect, all of which have problems, but things like your follicle stimulating hormone level or FSH, your anti-malarian hormone level or AMH, and your antral follicle count, which is the number of eggs that are there on your second, third, or fourth day. So all of those are a reasonable measure of how strong your ovaries are gonna be. And again, they all have their issues and they're not perfect tests, but they're reasonable indicators of how well you will respond. The third component is whether or not you're very suppressed before you start your stimulation. So if you've been on, for example, birth control pill for too long or suppressive medication for too long, or if you're just hormonally suppressed because of stress, staying home for COVID-19, having to deal with other family members struggling with issues as well. All of that can cause you to have hormonal suppression, in which case, again, your ovaries may not respond as well as we would like them to. The final component is what do we do for you as your doctor? If I'm kind of worried that you're gonna overstimulate, I might try a really low dose. Some doctors don't want to overstimulate you because they don't want to run into ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, while yet others try and do it because they want to minimize the number of follicles for either medical reasons or for financial reasons for you to keep your drug costs low. Unfortunately, in some cases, some doctors don't want to make too many eggs because they want to make sure that they're not overdoing the number of follicles that are there that they then have to deal with, whether it's because of extra embryos that are left over, or if you're in a funded model where they're having to have tons and tons of embryos left over to have to transplant. Obviously, that's not fair, and that's not something we would certainly encourage any physician to do. We want always for you to get the best care that you can possibly get. So out of all of those things, the number one determinant is age. And the older you are, the lower the likelihood you'll produce a high number of eggs. But you really have to look at the global picture. How many eggs are there at the start? How high was your dose when you started? What were your ovarian reserve markers? What's your overall health like? Even something like body mass index can have a significant role. Women who are too thin or are on the heavier side can also have a decrease in the number of eggs that are produced. So there are a lot of factors that go into it, and it's really critical that you know all of those details before you get started so that you can have at least some expectation of what you're gonna get and how your ovaries are gonna perform. I hope that explains that question for you and helps some people out before they get started. We're always here to help you. Like, comment, and subscribe. We're always open to taking more questions.